بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم بائی دا وے واٹ از دی نیم آف دی چیپٹر وچ از گوئنگ آن ڈرینج کروسنگ اسٹرکچر ہاں جی ڈرینج کروسنگ اسٹرکچر یا کراس ڈرینج اسٹرکچرس آر کراس ڈرینج ورکس and you know in this uh, chapter what we have discussed that there are three types of the cross drainage works there could be type 1 type 2 type 3 and in uh, type 1 uh, cross drainage structure what happens how the canals they cross drainage canal ka sir wo bed level uncha hota hai highest flood level se river ke to hum upar ki sign karte hain canal crosses the drainage above the drainage right in case of type 1 canal upar hogi drainage niche se guzar rahi hogi and uh, what are those structures in which comes under type 1 that is the aqueduct and what is the another one siphon aqueduct siphon aqueduct and uh, then the type 2 what are type 2 cross drainage structures in which canal crosses the drainage below the drainage all right and uh, what are the two uh, famous structures under type 2 kaun kaun si hai one is the super passage and the second is siphon super passage <coughs> and then what are the type 3 structures in which the bed levels of the canal and of the stream or drainage they are more or less same and their waters can be intermixed and what are the two famous structures in case of type 3 kon kon si aati hai bhai one is the level crossing and second is inlet and outlet anyway we had a detailed discussion on these all structures and uh, then later on you know that we also discussed uh, that uh, the fluming uh, we do require in case of the cross drainage structures now what is the reason of fluming why why we do fluming fluming means reduction in the width of the section this smooth transition of the uh, channel no no transition alag cheez hai i am not asking about the transition i am about why we do fluming fluming means reduction in width of the waterway you know the canal was having a very large cross section but while it is crossing over the drainage then the section is fluted its width is reduced so <coughs> what is the reason of fluming for the purpose of economy yes for the purpose of economy we want to economize the whole structure and you know again in case of aqueduct there are three type of the aqueducts type 1 aqueduct type 2 and type 3 that we studied huh? in type 1 aqueduct we don't do any fluming whatever is the uh you know the uh, canal is coming with the embankment the same passes over the drainage <coughs> in case of type 2 aqueduct what we do uh we provide retaining walls and in that way uh, we reduce the width of the uh you know the culvert required for drainage and what is the type 3 aqueduct in which we provide fluming and we reduce the width of the canal <coughs> and then water flows in rectangular troughs which are made of concrete 
But anyway, as we discussed that, uh, we, we provide fluming. So once we provide fluming, and they have the different shape, they have rectangular shape, whereas the channel has trapezoidal shape. So we need to connect them gradually. And what we require? We require transitions. First, we require contraction transition and then expansion transition. So up to this, we discussed in the previous lecture. And uh, these transitions, we have seen that there are three type of the transition. One is the cylinder quadrant transition, which is used for best charges less than 300 QSECs. And uh, another is the wedge type transition. And this is also used for this charge less than 300 QSECs. And the another is warped wall transitions in which we simply uh, keep on bending uh, the wall. And uh, it changes its uh, angle from whatever of the side slope of the canal to the vertical. <coughs> and now we want to discuss the methods for designing warped transition. And this we all, also, in the previous lecture, we have discussed that there are three methods. Number one, Mitra's method. Second, Chaturvedi's method. Third, Hint's method. Mitra's method is used when water depth remains constant. Whereas Chaturvedi's method is also used when the water depth remains constant. But the Hint's, Hint's method is used when water depth may or may not change. Now, let us first, uh, we, we have to discuss the Mitra's design method or Mitra's equation for the transition design. In this uh, plan, this is the plan of, uh, of a type three aqueduct, and this is the cross section and uh, longitudinal section. And uh, you know that if this is the direction of flow, then this transition will call as contraction transition. And then this is the flume of, uh, that is the trough of rectangular section. And then this transition is called as expansion transition. Usually the length of this contraction transition uh, is lesser, or we can say that the length of expansion transition is always kept greater than length of the contraction transition. This you might have observed also in case of Venturi meter. Do you remember? In Venturi meter, there was a converging cone, then throat, and then diverging cone, whose length was longer. Kiski length jarati? Kyonji converging cone ki or diverging cone ki? G. We are, of course, diverging cone ki length zada thi to avoid separation and turbulence. <coughs> the same is the case here. Uh, so this is the Vitra's equation. So Bx, Bx means the width of the transition at any distance x, and this x is measured from the flume section. So this is the flume section. So this would be the x for the contraction transition, and here this would be the x for the <coughs> expansion transition. So Bx is the width of the transition at any distance uh, x. Then what is the Bn? Bn is the bed width of normal channel section, which was previously, maybe this one. Huh? This is the, this one. And then the LF. So LF is the length of transition, uh, which is uh, this one. So this transition length, uh, this, this total, and uh, again, here there are the same things and X is here. So what happens with increase in X to the BX? Kya hota ji BX ko? Sir, 
तो डिक्रीज होगा डिक्रीज होगा एंड नाउ दिस मेथराज इक्वेशन दिस इक्वेशन इज बेसिकली ए हाइपरबोलिक इक्वेशन and it's derived to assure that the rate of change of velocity per unit length what is this rate of change of velocity per unit length of the transition remains constant okay so at everywhere the rate of change of velocity per unit length it should remain same now guidelines for fluming so fluming means reduction in width is carried out to reduce the cost of cross drainage work maximum fluming is limited by the requirement that the flow in the flumed section should remain which one sub critical and a velocity of 5 feet per second is adopted in link canals of pakistan however garge recommends velocity of order of even 3 meter per second maybe 10 feet per second instead of 5 so fluming ratio uh, 46% was provided on lcc lower chenab canal aqueduct over kadrabad baloke link canal and it has shown erosion problems as such fluming ratios more than 50% or longer is suggested so fluming ratio should be either 50% or more than 50% when i say that fluming ratio is 50% it means if the bottom width of the uh, canal is let's say 20 meter then how much should be the width of the trough wo kitni honi chahiye if the fluming ratio is 50% it should be 10 meter half okay so in transition is play should not be greater than 2 in 1 and inlet transition is play is play means jo hum slope de rahe hain in plan so that for inlet transition it should not be more than 2 in 1 and for outlet transition is play it should not be steeper than 3 in 1 so these are the minimum values so cross drainage work design steps what you have to do first of all decide type of cross drainage work kaun sa provide karna hai aqueduct karna hai super passage karna hai siphon super passage hai whatever number 2 calculate width of the drain or length of aqueduct of of course uh, it depends on the width of the river and number and size of openings and piers and number 3 decide fluming ratio 50% 55% 60% whatever you want okay but it should not be less than 50% number 4 decide transition length the how much should be the length of the <coughs> inlet transition which is called as contraction transition and how much should be the length of uh, exit transition which is known as expansion transition and you know that the length of the uh, exit transition is always kept longer as compared to inlet transition and then we have to design the transitions we have to compute the widths at any distance x and using mitra's equation okay and number 6 is starting from down steep section calculate water levels bed levels energy line and energy level at different sections assuming suitable losses coefficient for example 0.2 for entrance coefficient and 0.3 for exit this is the coefficient loss <coughs> and then number 7 decide partition and roadways number 8 provide suitable free board usually 0.6 meter do foot and number 9 trough slab must be structurally designed for dead load and water load jo us pe slab dalenge and the next is side walls may be designed as retaining walls do walls hain there would be water pressure 
and those should be designed as retaining walls. And the piers may be of masonry or maybe of concrete. So with that, uh, we discussed everything. Now we want to solve one example uh, of a cross drainage structure. That is the example 14.1 of book of uh, Jonas Garg. And uh, he says that design a suitable cross drainage work given the following data <coughs> at the crossing of a canal and a drainage. For canal, this is the data for canal and this is the data for drainage. For canal full supply discharge is 32 QMX. Full supply level is 213.5 meter and canal bed level is 212 meter and canal bed width, bottom width is 20 meter <coughs> and the side slopes of the canal are 1.5 horizontal to 1 vertical and canal water depth is 1.5 meter. So this is the data for the canal. Now, what is the data of drainage? High flood discharge is 300 QMX. And uh, high flood level is 210 meter. High flood depth is 2.5 meter. And general ground level is 212.5 meter. Now, considering this data, what do you, would you recommend? Uh, which type of structure we should provide? Cross drainage structure should be which type? Type 1, type 2, type 3. Kyunji Konsi Oni Chai and why? So type 1 Oni Type 1, why? Again in type 1, which type of cross drainage structure we should provide? Aqueduct or siphon aqueduct? Uh, sir, sir, aqueduct, I think. Why? Sir, bed level uh, and difference mm -hmm. is that less. Hmm. Okay, canal bed level is this one. 212 meter. Whereas high flood level is 210 meter. So it means canal bed level is 2 meter above the high flood level. So canal can pass easily, can cross easily above the drainage. So we have not to provide aqueduct, siphon aqueduct. There is no need of siphon aqueduct. We have to simply provide an aqueduct. Okay. Now an aqueduct, which type of aqueduct? Type 1, type 2 or type 3? And what is the reasoning of it? <clears throat> yes. Shall we provide type one? Shall we provide type two? Or shall we provide type three aqueduct? Now, how you can decide that? you have to decide with this discharge of the drainage. It is 300 QMX. It is considerable discharge. So it requires a sufficient width of the drainage or river. As it has a much longer width of the river, so the, uh, you know, the aqueduct has to cross over it so as its width is more, so length of the aqueduct trough required would be more. And when it is required would be more, then we must go for towards fluming to economize the cost. And once we will flume it, then it would be type 3 aqueduct. All right. So the same, he has done the solution. Yes, if you have any question, you are welcome. <coughs> Okay, this says the drainage is of large size. 300, right? Discharge, QMX. So work of type 3 will be adopted. Further, because the canal bed level 
is much above the high flood level uh, of the drainage, so an aqueduct will be constructed. The earthen banks of the canal will be discontinued and the canal water taken in will be taken in concrete trough. And for affecting economy, the canal shall be flumed. Once we say that it is type 3, so type 3 means we are doing fluming. All right. Now we have to design this type 3 aqueduct. All right. So step number one, design of drainage waterway. Like, you know, very, uh, we have to compute it very similarly as we computed drainage waterway in case of barrage design. How much you took the uh, uh, width of the barrage or how you have computed? Jaldi batao hai. Barrage ki width kaise nikalte hai? Sir, same formula, I think. No, it is that was not same formula. That the barrage width was equal to the Lacy's looseness coefficient into this wetted perimeter, which is 4.75 Q, root of Q. So, what do we do here? We just say that this is formula, Lacy's formula for wetted perimeter, we have to use it. And then we, we, uh, we computed later uh, wetted perimeter is equal to 82.3 meters for this discharge 300 kilometers. OK. Now let the clear span between piers uh, be, be 9 meter. Now we are saying that span is 9 meter ka hai, and the pier thickness is 1.5 meter. So how many uh, for this much uh, width of the river, how many base will we have of 9 meter? Eight base, okay. And uh, and clear waterway would be eight into nine, seventy-two meter. Seventy-two meter would be the clear waterway. Using seven piers of one point five each. Agar ye eight hain, to piers kitne honge? Seven, because two kya honge? Abutments, huh? So 7 into 1.5, 10.5. And the total length of the waterway is 72 plus 10.5 is 82.5 meter. So the waterway ki length compute karte hai, it is inclusive of piers. Step number two, design of canal water way. So bed width is 20 meter. Let width to be flumed is 10 meter. So, fluming ratio kya ho liya hamne? Fluming ratio we have taken as 50%. Okay, canal ko flume kar diya by 50%. Now, providing a splay of 2 in 1 in contraction. So, how much would be the length of the contraction transition? So, 20 is the total width. Minus 10 is the width of the concrete trough divided by 2 is basically the half length, uh, half width of the uh, canal at the both sections divided by 2, uh, multiplied by 2 is the length of the contraction transition. So that comes 10 meters. So we have provided 10 meter length of the contraction transition. So this is contraction transition and this length is 10 meter. OK, then we have to provide an display of three in one in expansion transition. Then the length of the transition would be 20 minus 10 over 2 into 3 is the 15 meter. So this length should be 15 meter from section 3 to section 4. Okay. And uh, the length of the flume rectangular portion of the canal between abutments should be how much? 82.5 meter, the same which is the width of the drainage. <coughs> 
Now we have to provide transitions and you know in transitions the side slope of the canal section will be warped in plan from original 1.5 to one slope to one vertical. OK, so so uh, this transitions they will come like this and become vertical. Now the step number three, we have to compute the head loss and bed levels at different sections. In the beginning, we will uh, consider section four four, which is which is the uh, on down extreme down steam section. And uh, now here the area of the flow you can compute like that B into Z Y into Y and Z means the horizontal component of the slope, which is 1.5 and you will get the area of flow at section number four at 33.75 square meter. Now compute velocity at section number four, V4, which is Q over A as Q for the canal is 32 divided by that and the velocity is 0.947 meter per second. Then the velocity head would be V4 square over 2G, which is 0 0.046. And the reduced level of bed at 44 is 212 meter and it is given. So this is the bed level is given. So, so what we can compute now? We can compute the energy level at section 4. OK. So the reduced level of water surface at section 4, 4 would be how much? 212 is the bed level plus the depth of flow 1.5 is the 213.5. And if I know the uh, how I can compute the reduced level of total energy line, how I can compute at section 4, 4, I know the uh, water level at section 4, then what I have to add inside? I have to add inside the velocity head, which is 0 0.46. So this would be the level of the energy line at section four. Now we have to go at section three, three. You know, once we know the total energy at uh, section four, four, how much should be the total energy at section three, three? Is it come on each or zyada on each The level of energy line should be higher at section 33 as compared to section 44. Yes, sir. yes. Sir. OK, and what about at section 22? Shall this the total energy line level should be higher as compared to section 33? Should it be? Yes. Because the water is flowing in this direction, so the energy here should be more as compared to here. And what about the total energy level at section one one? Should it be higher than at section two two? Yes, yes, it should be. So if I know the total, the level of the total energy lines, so then I can easily determine the bed levels at these sections. Now my question is, if I know the uh, reduced level of the total energy line at section four, how I can compute uh, the reduced level of total energy line at section three? Wo main kaise nikal hunga? Yes, I have to add the head loss from section two to section three. If I know the level of the total energy line at section three, how I can compute the level of energy line at section two? I have to add the total head loss. And you know, this is a trough and it is very long trough, 82.5 meter, which is the width of the, ye kya cheez hai? Width of the drainage. So width of the drainage is this much, 82.5 meter. And uh, how I can compute the total energy level here, whatever so when I know uh, at section two, I have to add the head loss. Achha, ji, hai. To jab hum section four pe hai, to section three pe aane ke liye head loss kis pe nikal hai? In the expansion transition. Hai na? 
एंड वेन यू आर एट सेक्शन थ्री तो सेक्शन टू पे आने के लिए कौन सा एड लॉस चाहिए द लॉस ड्यू टू फ्रिक्शन एंड रेक्टेंगुलर ट्रफ और जब सेक्शन टू टू से वन पे जाने के लिए यू नीड विच टाइप ऑफ हेड लॉस यू रिक्वायर्ड हेड लॉस कॉन्ट्रेक्शन ट्रांजेक्शन ठीक है तो दैट वी वॉन्ट टू डू ना नाउ वी वॉन्ट टू वी आर एट सेक्शन थ्री थ्री तो कीपिंग द सेम डेप्थ ऑफ वन पॉइंट फाइव मीटर थ्रू आउट इन दट जो यही वन पॉइंट फाइव मीटर डेप्थ ऑफ लो है इन दी कैनाल so bed width we are assuming uh, 10 10 meter in the trough okay so that is this section 3 is here so it is 10 meter and uh, area of channel would be 10 into 1.5 15 square meter velocity would at section 3 would be this discharge over area and that is 2.13 meter per second then velocity had you have to compute v3 square over 2g it is 0.323 Now we have to compute the head loss for when the water will flow from section three three to section four four. Or ये कौन सा head loss होगा? This this would be head loss due to expansion. All right. And this is the equation to compute the loss due to expansion. V three square minus V four square over two g. This is higher velocity, and this is lower velocity. And the coefficient expansion coefficient is zero point three. So which is given? So The head loss from section three to four is 0.056 meter. Now I know the head loss. Can I compute now the total energy at section three? Yes. Whatever the total energy at section four plus this head loss. Okay. So this is reduced level of total energy line at section three. A uh, reduced level of total energy line at section four four plus loss in expansion. So yes, we got this value to thirteen point six zero two meter as the uh, level of the energy line at section three. So reduced level of water surface. How we can compute? If I know the energy line, I have to subtract the velocity head. So this is the reduced level of energy line at section three minus velocity head. So these are the values. And this is the 213.37 meter is the reduced level of the water surface. And now, how I how I can compute bed? So bed level I can compute as I know the water surface level minus depth of flow, which we want to keep constant throughout the aqueduct. So this should be the level of the bed at section three to 11.87 meter. So we have wood. determine the bed level here okay now we have to determine the bed level here and how we can proceed so we have to just compute the head loss due to friction in this rectangular trough which is 82.5 meter long and uh, once you have computed so then you will compute the level of energy line total energy line here and then you will subtract velocity head and also 1.5 meter which is the depth of flow then you will get the bed level at section 2 so that we are doing here so at section 2 to 3 3 trough section is constant which is rectangular so whatever is the velocity you have computed at section 2 to the same would be the velocity at section 3 3 and the velocity head Uh, so the we have to now compute the head loss using manning's equation which says that head loss is n square into v square into l over r power 4 over 3 and if you will put these all values here you will compute cross sectional area is 10 into 1.5 and uh, manning's and we will take for concrete as 0.016 Okay, this is the Manning's end value for concrete. Yeah, this one. And uh, the wetted perimeter for the rectangular section uh, at two two will come as thirteen meter. Hydraulic mean depth as the yeah, hydraulic radius as one point one six meter, and the velocity in trough would be two point one three meter. and then the you can compute the head loss 
by using Manning's equation. So 0 0.079 meter is the head loss in 82.5 meter length of the aqueduct. <laughs> so now we can compute the reduced level of total energy line at section 22. We know the reduced level of total energy line at section 33. So simply we have to add the loss, uh, friction loss in the trough. And then we got this value to 13.681 meter. And once we know the total energy line, then we can compute the water surface level at section 22. So this and how we can uh, uh, compute the water surface. If I know the total energy level, level of the total energy line, then minus this is the velocity head. This would be the and, and, uh, uh, water surface level. And once we know the water surface level, how we can compute the bed level. So if this is the water surface level minus the depth of flow, we have to subtract. Then we can compute the bed level at section 2 to it means now we have designed the bed levels at section uh, 3 3 section 2 2 and now come to section 1 1. So how I can compute the total energy uh, level at section 1 1. So simply I have to compute the head loss in contraction transition and that is this equation V2 minus V1 square over 2g and this is the contraction coefficient which is 0.2 given and so the head loss is 0.037 meter so as i know the total energy energy at section 2 so i can compute total energy at section 1 so total energy at section 1 1 would be the energy at section 2 2 plus loss in contraction and that is 213. Point 718 meter. So as I know the total energy here, so how I can know the water surface elevation? Simply by subtracting the velocity head. And uh, then this is the water surface level at section 11. And how I can compute the river bed level at section 11? So this minus 1.5 and which is the depth of flow. So this is the river bed, uh, sorry, uh, canal bed level uh, at section one. Now these all are plotted in this diagram, in the next diagram, which uh, I would show you here uh, later. And uh, yes, this one. So you can see that the computed bed levels are here, this, 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 and that. And if you will provide these bed levels, then the depth of flow in the in the this uh, aqueduct will remain constant equal to 1.5 meters. All right. Yes, sir. What is the next? Next is the design of transitions and that we have to design by using uh, this uh, uh, equation which is the Mitra equation and we know the BF value is 10 meter. BN is the uh, you know the width of the bottom width of the channel was 20 meter. Length of the transition, consa transition, contraction transition I'm telling design uh, so this is the contraction transition. First, we are discussing or designing those key to length 10 meter have which we have already computed. Now the BX equation we have simplified in terms of this and just put the value of X. You will get the value of BX. Then we can make this uh, table maybe 0 to and total maximum uh, length of the transition 10 meter. So, so you will compute the BX. They can zero distance per way the sweeter IE, which which is the uh, you know uh, the width at the transition. Yahape, yeva this 10 meter or piram age jare in this direction. All right, we cannot go in this direction. This is always from the flumes, flume section. So, this is 2 meter pe, it is 11.1. 
फोर मीटर पे ट्वेल्व पॉइंट फाइव सिक्स पे ये एट पे सिक्सटी पॉइंट सेवन दस पे कंप्यूट करेंगे यू विल गेट एग्जैक्टली ट्वेंटी मीटर सो दिस इज हाउ यू कैन कंप्यूट द विथ ऑफ द ट्रांजेक्शन नाउ कम फॉर द एक्सपेंशन ट्रांजेक्शन एंड यू नो देंथ ऑफ द एक्सपेंशन ट्रांजेक्शन is how much 15 meter which we have already computed so you will use the same equation you will put values here and this is the simplified equation for expansion transition now you, you, the x value is in this direction and this is the bx and uh, you will make again a table maybe at interval of 2 and this is the 15 meter uh, you know which is the maximum length of the transition and then using this equation we have computed the width of the transitions and the last width should come 20 meter which is this one so this is uh, how you can design the contraction transition and expansion transition the last thing is the design of the trough and uh, normally we divide the whole cross section in two equal uh, uh, compartments let's say the total width was 10 meter to humne 5 5 meter ke do bana diye hain this is 5 meter this is another 5 meter and these are the retaining walls and normally we keep the thickness uh, as 0.3 meter which is the intermediate one and the 0.4 meter where uh, more thrust our thrust of water from one side is acting and here we have to provide the road as the the depth of flow is 1. Point, kitni hai depth of flow how much is depth 1. of flow 1.5 meter so and you will provide a free board of 0.6 meter above it so 1.5 plus 0.6 ye kitna ho gaya total 0. Point, sorry 2.1 meter okay so as you know the uh, this level is given ye hame iska level diya hua na so we can compute the other levels so the same is mentioned here so the 2.1 meter total ye ho gayi uske upar humne slab dalni hai and that is so outer walls ki thickness jo rakhni hai wo 0.4 meter aur jo bottom slab aur trough ki jo thickness hai that is 0.4 meter so the slab thickness is 0.4 meter so this is the design of trough all right so water will move in this as well as in this so the clear waterway is 10 meter this is the drying complete drying of uh, the aqueduct and this was type 3 aqueduct actually the canal was coming like that this was the bottom width of the canal and this is the you know the top width of the canal and uh, we have provided this transition okay and then this is the trough and its length is 82.5 meters this length and this width is 10 meter the fluming ratio is 50% and like that uh, so so this this is the direction of flow how we can know that ye kaise pata chale hamare kis tarah pata chala hai the length of entrance transition is always lesser than the length of the expansion transition okay so this is longer so that shows this is the direction of flow and you know uh, these are the piers and here uh, at this location we have the abutments ek abutment mein yahan dena padega ek yahan dena padega so these are the two abutments this and this whereas these are the piers and there are how many there were total piers no the pier to yahan pe humne section line lagayi hui hai na taaki ye kaata hua hai continuity show kar rahe hain so with that we have finished this chapter now if you have any questions you are welcome
जी भाई नो सर नो क्वेश्चंस ओके सो आई थिंक नाउ यू आर इन अ पोजीशन टू डिजाइन अक्रॉस ड्रेनेज स्ट्रक्चर ठीक है भाई क्या ख्याल है पर्टिकुलरली दी एक्वेडक्ट और एक्वेडक्ट में भी कौन सी एक्वेडक्ट टाइप वन टाइप टू और टाइप थ्री टाइप थ्री जिसमें हम फ्लूमिंग कर रहे हैं ओके तो दिस इज ऑल अबाउट दिस चैप्टर ऑफ द क्रॉस ड्रेनेज वर्क्स आई थिंक दिस चैप्टर आई हैव ऑलरेडी शेयर विद यू है ना नो सर इसकी पीडीएफ नहीं भेजी नहीं भेजी आई थिंक हो गई है यार चलो मैं शेयर कर देता हूं भेज दी भेज दी ओके यू कैन हैव देयर एंड नाउ इफ यू हैव एनी एनी कांसेप्चुअल प्रॉब्लम क्वेश्चन डिफिकल्टी देन यू कैन डिस्कस इट क्यों भाई देर शुड बी सम क्वेश्चन ओके नो क्वेश्चंस ओके देन आई वुड लाइक टू स्टॉप एग्जाम एग्जाम शेड्यूल कब तक एक्सपेक्टेड है एग्जाम व्हेन द 16 वीक्स वुड बी ओवर देन देयर वुड बी एग्जाम एंड नाउ द सिचुएशंस आर बिकमिंग बेटर टुडे वी हैव अ मीटिंग ऑफ ऑल डीन्स एंड you know the vice chancellor and uh, we are uh, reviewing uh, the basically these old things uh, because uh, now i think there is a priority that uh, students uh, must be vaccinated first students and the teachers and uh, we are moving towards the reopening of the of the universities schools and colleges so let's see but i think now hopefully uh, we will be coming uh, towards the physical mode of mode of teaching theek hai right sir so all right thank you danji okay assalam alaikum